Matthews every weekday as he brings you all you need to know about your Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions with some of the biggest names in sports. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Or watch us live at 8 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Good morning. It's a live edition of Pod Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. Large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Gators win their 20th game of the season last night against the Missouri Tigers. Um, went about how I was expected. So good win for them. I saw this note. I have to read this. I took a screenshot of it. Um, pretty impressive. Uh, with the win, Florida secured its 20th season this century with at least 20 wins. There's only two other power fives that have more wins. Gonzaga at 23, um, Kentucky in 20, 22 years, I should say, the 20th season. Um, so that's pretty kind of cool. I didn't realize that. Uh, we're going to have Brent Beer, our college football analyst, and we'll talk a little high school sports with Mike Wright out. We couldn't get him on last week or the previous week. Had some. That's when a whole AT&T nightmare happened. Uh, let's go to the Titan MR hotline. We're joined by our, our college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter, our man Brent Beer. Good morning, Brent. How you doing? Well, I'm doing well. It's a wonderful time of year uh, with uh, uh, the, the uh, college basketball situation. Uh, a lot of changes, obviously, going on in college football. Uh, spring football, thank God, is starting. So we're going to actually talk about some teams on the field today, which would be a wonderful relief uh, with that. So uh, always uh, good to be on with you. Yes, indeed. Uh, real quick before we jump into it, uh, Barone71 on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plum, says, QB the Gator football changed their numeric font starting in the 2013 season. The jerseys pre-2013 had the number font you wore. Uh, yeah, they changed them a little bit, but they're not dramatically different like the damn baseball jerseys. Uh, I, I know what y'all are referring to. They're still very similar. I prefer uh, the one – when they changed the school color, Nike changed the school color, first of all. Go look at the jerseys in the, in the Spurrier era compared to when Urban and them coached here. They changed the color, and it sucks. Um, but anyway, yeah, I know what you're talking about. But the, but the it was it was just a slight change. The damn baseball numbers are ridiculous. That's my two cents tonight. All right, Brent. Um, college football it never stops. Uh, nope. We have they, they they keep talking about. Um, well, first of all, they're going to have possibly three signing days next year. Well, uh, the here the main problem is they have realized that the December calendar is ridiculous. So what are we going to do to get rid of some of these things? And one of the things they need to get rid of is um, uh, the early signing period in December. So the committees uh, are meeting this week in uh, Indianapolis to discuss the calendar change. And what, one of the things they're proposing is having three different signing periods. One would be the last Wednesday in June. One would be the Wednesday following the regular season, which would be the Wednesday before the SEC championship game. Uh, and, of course, the first Wednesday in February. Well, I could help them here and tell them that uh, the Wednesday following the end of the regular season needs to go. They need to get all that off of December. And frankly, it would be smart if they had a dead uh, period in December, too. The last Wednesday in June is interesting. Probably would be better off if they did it the last Wednesday in July or August. I mean, if you're going to have an early signing period, make it early. So I'm not sure where this is going, uh, but there are – they're they're proposing these three time periods, uh, and and the main thing is they just need to do something uh, to get it out of December, and that would help them a lot. Yeah, Joseph says on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Law. Impressive win last night, playing through adversity with the refs and Clayton filing out. Yeah, it was a good test, and uh, win the game and and move on. Uh, okay, Brent, we talked last week, I believe. Obviously, there's a 12 team playoff starting this year. 
but they're thinking about in 2025 having a 14-team playoff. What can you tell us about that? Well, uh, the good thing is uh, they will have the 12-team playoff beginning this year and next year. Uh, But in 2026, it it is wide open. Uh, We don't know what they're going to do. They're still trying to figure that out. Well, one of the things that caught everybody's attention last night on the ticker, uh, particularly with ESPN, is they are discussing the possibility also of a 14-team playoff beginning in 2026. Now, obviously, that, that, that will only be two more teams. Um, but uh, and, and I think really where some of this is coming from is the uh, SEC and the, uh, uh, the Big Ten. The Big Ten commissioner, Tony Petiti, uh, wants 14, and frankly, he wants 16. But you've got to crawl before you walk here, uh, and they need to try out the 12 the next two years and see how that goes. Now, uh, we've got this 5-7 format uh, for the next two years, which is, which is the five uh, automatic qualifiers or the highest-ranked conference champions, and then the seven highest-rated teams after that but what we're looking at here and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this but but i'm going to throw it out that instead of a five seven <laughs> this is almost comical here but they're looking at a three three two two one well uh in, in essence this is what this means it would be that um the um the sec and the big ten would have three uh, at least guaranteed uh, teams um, in the playoffs. Uh, And look, here's the thought process here briefly. The SEC and the Big Ten, uh, their comment on this is, well, we provide the most money and we provide the most teams. Well, why don't we have more guarantees in the playoffs? Uh, so that's what some of this is about. And, and again, without getting too far down the rabbit hole, uh, there is talk, again, as we've talked before, about the SEC uh, and the Big Ten breaking off or at least becoming a uh, the, the number one tier. And then you have the ACC and the Big 12 and the number two tier. Okay, without this getting too complicated, uh, the main point here for our listeners uh, is the five, seven, 12 teams um, this year, next year, uh, 2026 is still up for grabs, and we don't know where that's going yet. Yes, indeed. Uh, somebody mentioned here about the baseball numbers. Yeah, they're only different on the new jerseys, not the old jerseys that we wear. Um, Brent, the uh, the the semis are going to be in a they're they're going to be out of the ACC after this year. I think this this is their last year. Give us the update on that. And where are they going to go? Well, uh, as far as FSU is concerned, what they're dealing with now uh, is uh, they have let everybody know that they want out. Uh, There's no secret to that. And the ACC and the um, uh, and FSU they they've sued and countersued. Uh, The basically what they're looking at is probably around $550 million in order to get out of the conference. Well, behind the scenes, what's going on with this is uh, they are negotiating this down, and if they could get about half of that, uh, Florida State pay half of it, and then the rest of it go to the ACC, at least ACC would get some money. Um, and then, but what Florida State's got to do, if they, if they want out, as I say, they do, they have got to uh, uh, to do an official uh, request, and they and they've got to do that by August fifteenth in order to. Um, uh, you basically got to do it a year ahead of time. Uh, it's what it's what this is. So this we think will be their last year with the ACC, uh, and then then they will leave. Now, what I have heard and been told from talking to people is 
they likely are going to the Big Ten. Uh, you're not going to the Big 12 because if you do, you're not going to get much more money, If you even if you do, than what you're getting right now in the ACC. So the the FSU's two, if they want more money, and they do, would be to, would be to go to the SEC or the Big Ten. So we're not ruling anything out right now, but I'm hearing more Big Ten than I am for the uh, SEC. So uh, th- th- that gives you a little bit of timetable about what they're dealing with. Well, I, th- there's no way they're going to be in the SEC. Um, from the meeting that Greg Sankey had with us, uh, that Legends Dinner thing. Right, right. He No, the, o- the only potential uh, additions would be Clemson, Virginia, or North Carolina, I believe. Right. Um, Mike, uh, on, on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Law, says when a coach has a bonus making the playoffs based on the 14 playoff, does it change when the playoffs go to 12? I doubt it. Um, I don't know how exactly how those coaches' contracts read. But uh, on the Titanum or text line, Josh from Mississippi says, QB, you always say you never really worked out or lifted when you play. Do you now? Um, yeah, I work out. Not heavy. I mean, it's it's a joke what I do. But. I wish I was as big and strong as I am now at 53. I weigh 210, the most I ever weighed. When I was a sophomore in college, I was 170, got to 175 as a sophomore, I mean, as a junior, and I was 180 my senior year and went to the combine at 180 and only played in the NFL at 193. So I'm about 25 pounds bigger and stronger now than I was back in my playing days. Josh also says, can you ask Brent, if and how much are players getting compensated for the new NCA game coming out this summer? They're getting a video, copy of the video. Yeah, they're getting a copy of the game, and they're getting. I, I, I've seen different things, um, and, and I thought I saw like um, it's somewhere between six hundred and a thousand dollars. I mean, the, the, they're not look. The, they're not getting a fortune, but. Uh, the game has been is is they they've got the new one coming out. A lot of people are excited about that. Um, so that that's kind of, that's basically what it's going to be. Is my understanding? They'll get a certain dollar amount. They'll get they'll get their own copy, uh, and we'll see how that works. But um, uh, a lot a lot of people looking forward to it. Uh, this is a, a text from our New York Gator, and he says. Shane, you made me laugh yesterday because you actually nailed it with me being from the Hamptons. Uh, I'm local, though, not fancy city folk. Daughter's a junior at UF. Solid hoops win last night. Tyrese was a monster uh, and, and impressed with pulling steady composure. I'm a proud Gator dad. Yep, he's from the Hamptons. So there you go. We got worldwide listeners. Um, Brent, the transfer portal this year, obviously uh, you have here listed the five best transfers picked up. Want to go through those guys? Yeah, a lot of these names are familiar. Walter Nolan was at A&M. He's now at Ole Miss. He's one of the better defensive tackles. Uh, Trevor Etienne, obviously going to Georgia. Um, Nick Scorton, who is also at A&M, uh, the defensive end. Uh, actually, he's there uh, at A&M. I'm sorry, he was at Purdue. Uh, and he'll be good in Mike Elko's defense. Isaiah Bond went from Alabama to Texas. He is a wide receiver that caught the uh, uh, the winning touchdown pass against Auburn. And then Caden Green uh, is going to Missouri uh, as an offensive tackle. I mean, look, this, this list is uh, debatable, of course, but uh, those are – uh, five good names there, uh, and I and I will be curious how Georgia uses ETN in their in their offense and maybe also their kicking game. Yeah, because I, I'm I'm under the belief he's still going to split a ton of carries. Georgia's got some dudes back there in the they backfield. Do. They so. really do. Live a healthier lifestyle with our bold, flavorful smoothies and our amazing food. Tropical smoothie. When you eat better, you feel better. We got our college football analyst who who always eats better. Brent Beard on the Titan More Hotline, courtesy of Duffield Home Improvements. We have Mike right out talking a little high school sports um, after this program. All right, um, Brent, let's go around the SEC. Um, you know, it's it's been a long time there, since there's a lot of question marks in Tuscaloosa. They yeah. lost a lot of good players to the NFL or they transferred, new entire coaching staff. Uh, just your thoughts leading up to spring ball, which – 
pretty much everybody's going to be starting spring ball, I think, next week, right? Uh, well, uh, we've got Auburn and Missouri started this week. Mm. Auburn started Tuesday. Now uh, we're going to have several more. Uh, this That's the fun thing about this time of year is we have two or three different teams that start every week. Um, listen, Missouri's spring game is in the, is in the middle of March. Hmm. So some teams, uh, I'm curious your take on this. Some teams start early in case they get injuries. That that their theory is that my guys, if we get hurt, we can get healthy before the season begins. So that's some of the logic with that. To by the way, I'm a big tropical smoothie fan. I was there yesterday, so I appreciate <laughs> the. Uh, I appreciate the spot. Um, I'll tell you what I got a little later, but uh, okay. Kalen DeBoer uh, is going to have to uh, replace a lot of guys at cornerback. Kool-Aid McKinstry and Teron Arnold have gone to the NFL. Trey Ar- uh, Amos um, is also left. So they're go- only going to have five scholarship corners. Uh, when they come in, so that uh, one of those is Jalil Hurley didn't play much last year. They think he will uh, be okay. Offensive tackle, uh, they lost both their starting offensive tackles. J.C. Latham with the NFL, Kane Proctor transfer back to Iowa, so they've got 13 offensive linemen. Uh, Elijah Pritchard is one of the guys that they're looking for. They also lost Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell in the edge rushers. Um, and, and they've got some really good kids here. Keon Keeley, Qua Rousseau. Uh, they're running a 4-2-5. Kane Womack came over from USA, South Alabama. And Nick Samey ran a 4-3, so there's a little bit of difference there. Shane can kind of t- tell us how that works. Uh, wide receiver, Isaiah Bond's gone. Malik Minson's gone. Jermaine Burton is gone. The, he transferred from Georgia. But they've got a lot of wide receivers who, who are going to be really good. Kendrick Law, Kobe Prentice, Jalen Hale all, all played last year. They love Ryan Williams, who's coming in from Sarah Land in Alabama. Uh, uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, I and obviously they've got other replacements at safety and so forth. Caleb Downs is gone. Jalen Key also. Uh, so it would be one of the more interesting springs in Alabama since Nick Saban's first year in 2007. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Auburn, this is a big year, I feel like, for Hugh Freeze. You know, it's year two. Um, they were just god-awful offensively. Um, I don't – there you have a quarterback competition going on. You know, Auburn played some decent defense, but, you know, they did go to a bowl game. That doesn't say a whole lot because I think Florida was a better football team than they were, just the schedule they were. didn't work out. Um, but what's going on on the Plains? Well, uh, obviously when you're talking about Auburn, you're talking about the quarterback situation. The quarterbacks at Auburn right now are either average or they're young. Uh, and that's not a good combination, is it? Peyton Thorne comes back from last year, and he's okay, uh, and and they're hoping he can really, the light will come on and he'll be better. Holden Grenier and Hank Brown, they like this kid Walker White um, a good bit, but he's still young. You, you know, George West Hunter comes back at running back, and they got some other guys, Damari Austin, Jeremiah Cobb, Brian Battle, who they like. Their receivers are, are going to be significantly better. Um, I mean, you and I and whoever we could round up would be better than the receivers they had last year. Camden Brown, Cam Coleman's a kid they love. Uh, both the Cams here, as they call them, are significant upgrades at receiver. Taylor Burton is in there, too. Um, but, again, the thing with Auburn is they've still got to straighten out their offensive line. It's still not very good. They're still suffering from – Gus Malzahn's um, uh, poor offensive line recruiting. Um, so, uh, but, but anyway, I'm, and I'm with you on this. It will be a a very interesting um, uh, year for Auburn to see if that offense does improve. 
Yeah, up in Athens, uh, I mean, this happens in all of college football today, but Kirby's lost multiple assistant coaches. Um, they lost a lot of good players, a lot of, a lot of changes going on in uh, Athens. Yeah, let me hit a few things real quick on Georgia. I'm going to start with this. Um, Claude Felton, who a lot of people don't know and a lot of people do, is their sports information director. Well, after 40 years, uh, he's retiring. Claude Felton, hands down, bar none, uh, was the best sports information director uh, I believe there's ever been in the Southeastern Conference. He understood his job. He uh, uh, he worked with the media instead of keeping them at arm's length. Uh, and it'll be really sad to uh, see him go. So congratulations to him and uh, in retirement. Now, Georgia, obviously, and I think they start next week. Um, they've got to do a lot with their – Obviously, with their defense, um, Javon Buller, Tyke Smith, Kamari Laster all went to the uh, NFL, um, and they've got obviously talent coming back, like um, uh, like Starks is coming back at free safety, um, Malachi Starks, and he's one of the better ones there. Uh, quickly on Georgia, they're replacing some coaches, Josh Crawford is coming from Georgia Tech to Georgia. Uh, he's going to be the new running backs coach. The The guy that they brought in, and I'm curious if you know this guy, James Coley, mm -hmm. uh, his name is, is well known. He's been all around the South. He's been to Miami. He's been at um, Florida State. So they're bringing him in um, as one of the assistants. He's from Miami. And look, everything Kirby does was like Nick Saban. It's all around recruiting. So they're bringing Coley in, not just as a position coach, but mainly because he knows that South Florida area, uh, particularly around Miami. So uh, you're right, comings and goings at Georgia and a whole lot of talent coming back too. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with the Gators? A lot of people you know, have seen what's happened here recently, but – uh, may have been sleeping under a rock. What can you tell us, Brent? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dan Enos, who's a familiar name, he was at Arkansas. He's been around the league, uh, is going to be in a off-the-field, endless position with responsibilities, including scouting and projects uh, to help Billy Napier. Also, uh, Joe Hamilton, the NFL liaison, is going to – uh, A&M, uh, Jesse Ackerman is going to be the new Associate Director of Player Performance. Uh, Russ Callaway, uh, the tight ends coach, is being promoted to co-offensive coordinator, uh, too. Uh, so that that's just a quick rundown uh, in a nutshell of the, uh, of the kind of the comings and goings with the staff at Florida. Yeah. Uh, how about the Ole Miss Rebels, Jackson Dart? I mean, people probably saw this, but he had he signed an NIL deal with a jet company. That's my he kind did. of deal right there, man. He can fly wherever he wants. Could we get? Could we all get a deal like that? Um, he is. Uh, it, 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 the endorsement provides Dart hours uh, to Nicholas Air's fleet of jets for travel. Training in uh, philanthropy. <laughs> how about how about that deal, Shane? Uh, the first one that's ever been done, we understand. So the, again, Jackson Dars, the returning quarterback at Ole Miss, uh, and they would be predicted by everyone to be in the top ten. Uh, this uh, so, uh, but if you can get deals like that, <laughs> good for him. Yes, indeed. That, that's a good deal for sure. Uh, speaking of that, you know, I was up in Georgia at some of my schools last week and they have these billboards. It seemed like every law firm that has a billboard in the state of Georgia has a University of Georgia football player on that billboard yeah. as well. Right. It was, right. It was quite interesting. I'm um, sure it was. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee, Brent, let, I haven't really followed what's going on with the NCAA in Tennessee. Where, where does all that stand? Well, in a nutshell, uh, the NCAA 
Um, uh, obviously, they um, brought lawsuit against Tennessee, um, but then Tennessee countered. Virginia did too, uh, and basically the NCAA lost another lawsuit. Is what that means. Um, so, and, and again, I'm still a little bit unsure about what's going to happen. As you remember, before that happened, uh, the um, uh, there were some recruiting allegations from the NCAA for Tennessee. That'd be interesting to see where that goes. May not. I don't think it's going anywhere, frankly. Uh, but again, Tennessee's going to be starting. Uh, Nicole Lamaliva is going to be the uh, their quarterback, and he played against Iowa in the bowl game and looked good. Uh, also, um, again, I think the big thing for them is going to be their defense uh, and how they're able to uh, uh, replenish uh, some of what they've got. They did get Jermon McCoy from Oregon State. They that they do like him, so uh, a lot a lot of excitement um, uh, in Knoxville right now. Uh, for the uh, the football and, and also for the basketball team. Uh, Brandon says on Facebook Live, brought to you by Metal Law, UGA has a forward-thinking collective, and the school accepts the people that have supported them over the years. I would agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. The Aggies uh, have a big-name uh, football player that, that is entering the transfer portal, um, but that portal window opens up in April. Is that right? Yeah. I can't keep yeah. up, Brent. Yeah, it, 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 the next portal window will be April the 15th, and it will go for two weeks. Now, here's the thing for uh, for our listeners and viewers is you cannot – remember in the spring, in the SEC, you can't transfer between schools. So there, there won't be any transferring with uh, within SEC schools. In other words – a uh, player from Georgia can't transfer to Florida. That, that, that's just the rule. Um, so that has to happen in the, in, in the winter. And that's why, uh, particularly last year, there, were so, there wasn't much activity in the portal within the uh, SEC. There was a little bit, but that's just something to keep in mind. And what Shane's talking about is their safety, Jacoby Matthews. Uh, I, I guess maybe you, you get this out early. <laughs> Is that what this is, Shane? Um, plans to enter the portal when it opens in April, six five six two two oh five. I mean, the kid had sixty seven tackles. Um, so, but but look, I, I think A and M will be good. Connor Wigman comes back uh, at quarterback. Mike Elko, I think, is really good coach, uh, and they've got Colin Klein, um, uh, who is uh, from. Kansas State is going to be uh, helping Connor Weekman too. So a may be a little bit under the uh, the, the radar uh, compared to what they were with Jimbo, but that that's going to be a team to watch, I believe. All right, give us some nuggets before we get you out of here. Time moves way too fast. There's a lot to talk about this time of the year, but give there us is. some good nuggets. Yeah, uh, Clemson started yesterday, um, so when we will – Keep an eye on them. Garrett Riley uh, still hoping to uh, uh, to get that offense better than it was. Florida State starting soon. Uh, uh, their defense, they've still got some guys um, who are going to be coming back. Patrick Payton, for one. Um, they went, Their spring game is April the 20th, uh, and they will uh, – they, they, they are starting – on Tuesday, March the 19th, there'll be a lot of schools that'll be starting during that time, too. Miami starts Monday, so we will be keeping an eye on them. Uh, Jalen Rivers, offensive lineman, is coming back. That's really going to help them. Um, also, um, uh, so uh, and hopefully they will be a bit better, too. Xavier Restapro uh, is coming back. All eyes on Cam Ward, uh, the transfer at quarterback, one of the better ones uh, to kind of see where that's going to go. But we will, uh, and, and and believe it or not, we're going to start talking about Texas and Oklahoma because they're, they're going to be in the league. Quinn Ewers comes back. 
we know Arch Manning's in line for something at some point. So that's going to be a very talented Texas football team. But Shane, we're keep we're keeping our eye on basketball and all these new uh, uh, NCAA situations that uh, Shane that seem to change every day, don't they? Yeah, they really do. Brent, good stuff as always. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week, my man. Look forward to it, pal. Take care. That's Brent Beard, our college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter. Join us on the Titan Amar Hotline, courtesy of Duffy Home Improvements. Take a quick time out. Come back. Talk a little high school sports on the Baker Sporting Goods High School Roundup with our man, Mike Rideout. You're watching and listening to Pot Up with Matthews in the Morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios. We'll be right back. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Melden Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Dave & Buster's, eat, drink, play, watch. Duffield Home Improvements for your window, siding, and roofing needs. Radware, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Pro football legend Emmett Smith understands your joint pain. It does not surprise me that there are a ton of people out there that's in pain. That's why Emmett is such a proponent of QC Kinetics, offering real lasting joint pain relief with non-surgical, all-natural biologic treatments. Whether it's a joint pain, ankle pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, any kind of pain, the body eventually will break down when it's under that much stress. That stress can cloud your judgment to the point that you'll just say yes to the scalpel or yes to another prescription of pain pills. But maybe it's time for a second opinion from QC Kinetics. The reason why I would recommend this is because the natural biologics that QC Kinetics is providing you gives your body a chance to naturally heal itself. Restorative regenerative solutions are here. Get lasting relief and live your life. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. That's 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve and small enough to care. Ruse Ogre State Farm Office is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352-240-1779. We're going to go back to the Titan More Hotline, courtesy of Duffield Home Improvements, joined by a guy who does a tremendous job covering high school sports. Mike right out from the prepzone.com and Main Street Daily News. Good morning, Mike. How you doing, bud? Very good, Shane. Good morning. How are you? We don't have to deal with the AT&T mess today. Thank oh, goodness. thank God. Yes, yes. That was a mess. Sorry <laughs> that about was. that last week. <laughs> All good. Uh, let's talk about uh, high school basketball is winding down. Uh, okay. In this area, got some teams that are trying to repeat as state champs. Yeah, for the uh, teams in the Main Street Daily News coverage area, we're down to our final two basketball teams, one in girls and one in boys, and they are both defending state champions. We'll start with girls first. Hawthorne, which is coached by Cornelius Ingram, who's also the football coach, he's going for his second straight girls basketball state championship. He's won two straight football titles, now has a chance to win two straight basketball titles. But the only problem is they're going to get a, a much improved Wildwood team that's really kind of been running rushhead over everybody this year. But, you know, there's still a chance. While Hawthorne upset Wildwood last year in the championship game. This is a rematch of last year's state championship game. 
Hawthorne defeated Trenton, um, or excuse me, Madison County in the region final, and Wildwood defeated Trenton in the region final to get here, Ponce de Leon and Graceville in the other semifinal, but the winner of that game between Hawthorne and Wildwood, in my opinion, will win the state championship. Um, that's going to be on Friday at 3 p.m. I'll broadcast the game on MainStreetDailyNews.com beginning at 2.50 p.m. I'll also be on the call tomorrow morning for Williston Boys Basketball. Williston, also a defending state champion. They will play Chipley, who they defeated in last year's state championship game. So kind of neat that we've got rematches of state championship games from last year. But Williston and Chipley at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, pretty interesting story, too, Shane. It, it's been a while since an area girls basketball team I want to say 15 years, Keystone Heights was the last area team to win back-to-back -back from our area. The last boys state champion to go back-to-back. -back. You have to go all the way back to 1999 and 2000 when Gainesville High School, they were led by Mr. Basketball, Orion Green, among others, Ian Scott, who's now the head football coach, when they won back-to-back -back state championships. But also, ironically, Chipley is looking to become the last 1A school to go back-to-back they won back-to-back 1A -back state titles in 2015 and 2016. But this Williston team is really good, Shane. They are among the top three small schools in the country. They're the number 10 overall team in Florida. They've got a record of 27-2, and two, and they've played a tough schedule, and they you know, they really are peaking at the right time. In the region final against Trenton, 95-37, Shane. They, they blew them out. Mm -hmm. So uh, they had 89 against Dixie County in the postseason as well. Uh, I like Williston to repeat as state champions. It's going to be a little tougher, though, for Hawthorne. Uh, but I, th I still think a, a winnable game against Wildwood, but they're going to have to have some things go right for them. Yeah, Williston, you know, they beat up on some big boys uh, this year. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you, Mike, are, are the kid? Well, I mean, it's a small school, so I assume those kids, a lot of their players are football players. Do they have any race like a legit basketball player that's going to go play at the next level? Well, they actually have a, a several guys that are getting um, offers. So they will have, I think they could have as many as four players get an opportunity to play at the next level. Uh, I don't think that they've got anyone committed yet, but among their guys, uh, well, well, Javon Brown, you mentioned football. He's already mm -hmm. signed with Toledo for football. Uh, okay. But Reggie White, he, he's uncommitted right now, but he's got multiple offers. Aramis Rodriguez also uh, has offers to play college basketball. Kyler Lamb, probably the maybe the best player on the team. He's got multiple offers to play college basketball. So, you know, kind of a unique situation. you got potentially, you know, four uh, college guys on, on the team, although Brown, you know, being for football. But, yeah, they're, they're really good, and uh, I think that's what makes them so good. You know, kind of similar to, to Florida, and they, you got to kind of pick your poison against them. Radware is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. We got our uh, high school uh, reporter, coverer, whatever you call it, the guy that does a tremendous <laughs> job, Mike Rideout, that takes good care of these high school kids. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. High school baseball and softball have cranked up. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you? I mean, it's real early. Um, yeah. It's the same – cast of characters in our area, Trinity Catholic, North Marion, Buholtz, pretty much the top teams? You know, North Marion, a defending state champion, has kind of gotten off to a slow start. They lost some, obviously, some really good talent uh, from that team. Uh, so I, I think the jury's still out. They, a, a good test for them, actually, will be on Tuesday. North Marion plays at Buholtz. Uh, so we'll start there with, with baseball because you know, Buholtz got to a region final last year. North Marion, by the way, one and two. They just lost to Keystone Heights. Uh, they lost at Lake City, Columbia. They did beat Santa Fe on the road in a shootout, 15 to 11. So uh, a good test against Buholtz on Tuesday. Buholtz, though, Shane, I think they can get to the Final Four. They just missed out on a Final Four appearance last year against Winter Springs. Uh, they rallied from five runs down, only to see Winter Springs win it in the final inning. Um, that's how close they came to their first ever Final Four. I think Buholtz, you know, when you talk about the players that are returning for them, Anthony Wilkie, who's a Clemson signee, Noah Hayes has signed with the University of Central Florida, Cooper Collins is going to Davidson College, 
Um, and that's just a handful of guys that are returning. Austin Cardozo, you know, he plays a number of positions, including pitcher, Connor Brown, Sedaris Smith, J.J. Gardner, who's a JU commit. This is a team, Shane, that I think can make a run to a state championship this year. And, uh, you know, for Buholtz, they did kind of get off to a, a, a slow start. Bobcats lost their uh, first and only game of the year. But um, that was the St. John's Country Day at Orange Park. You know, they've had a pretty good baseball program there, and that was an eight-inning game. They've got Fleming Allen coming up, uh, Palmetto, and then the North Marion game. But I do think Buholtz has a chance to, to make a run. Uh, Columbia has been the back-to-back state semifinals. I don't think – I think they've lost too much talent to get back there. I think they could still win their district title. And then, you know, among the uh, small schools, you know, Newberry has proven it can get to a Final Four. Uh, last year, they came up just short in the state semifinals, so uh, we'll see. But I think the best baseball team in the area is Buholtz. Over in softball, Brantford is the best team. Brantford was in the state championship game for the first time in program history last year. Uh, they lost a tough one, too, on, on a home run late fifth inning. And they've got um, – I think they've got uh, eight players, eight starters back on this team. I mean, they're loaded this year. So I think Brantford will be the team to watch in Class 1A coming out of softball. Uh, One team to keep your eye on, though, Shane, Gainesville High School. Gainesville won last night. They are off to a 4-0 start. They picked up some key transfers. Uh, I say key transfers. One's a a transfer from Columbia, McKenna O'Sullivan. But Leanna Bordaj, or I'm not sure how you pronounce her name. I haven't met her yet. She's a freshman for this Gainesville team, and she has really been pitching well. She threw a a complete game two-hitter in her debut against Santa Fe on Tuesday. Only one walk, 15 strikeouts last week. Um, Only one walk and 11 strikeouts in their win against Williston, 13-2. So I think Gainesville is a team to to watch. Uh, Even though they were a little bit down last year, Gainesville, I think, won six games last year, 6-14 and last year. Uh, so they will be uh, a team to watch, as will Trenton. Trenton is growing up. They were a young team last year. And uh, those two teams, Trenton and Gainesville, will play each other on Thursday. And I'll have uh, a broadcast of that next Thursday, March 7th. So a good uh, measuring stick for both those softball teams. Um, we got a text here on the Tate and Mark text line from Robert saying, Mike, will you eventually be calling some baseball and softball games on air this year? Absolutely. Yeah, we typically at MainStreetDailyNews.com broadcast two games per week. Uh, However, with basketball still going on and us broadcasting as many as four games this weekend, because we'll have the the two state semifinal games on Friday. But if Willison and Hawthorne win, we'll also broadcast their games on Saturday from Lakeland. And then we'll start our our softball baseball coverage beginning next week. Uh, Next week, Trenton GHS softball, as I mentioned, will be our first broadcast of the year. And I'm kind of leaning towards O'Call at GHS uh, on Friday the 8th, but we will be releasing our baseball softball schedule, broadcast schedule next week. But, yeah, absolutely. I think we'll have about six games in March because of the extra basketball games to start the month. But then we'll get back to a, a two-game rotation every week for the rest of the season. Um, there was some news that hit this week or last couple of days here in high school football. Uh, people may have heard it. If not, you want to let them know all about what happened at Buholtz? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, huge news. It was uh, definitely a shocker to, to learn this, but Chuck Bell, who took over for Mark Whittemore last year after being the defensive coordinator in his first season, took them to their first undefeated regular season since 2001. They made a run all the way to the state semifinals, lost uh, – really on a missed extra point to Lakeland, the eventual state champion in the state semifinals, went 13 and one under Bell. He has announced that he is stepping down as the head football coach. He's going to remain on staff as the school's defensive coordinator. But Shane, he's got a baby on the way. Uh, so I can certainly understand. I've always said family first, and at least they're in good hands because Mark Whittemore, who retired in December of 2022, <laughs> took him to back-to-back state, cha- uh, state semifinal appearances before Bell came on board. He has uh, taken o- he's taking over as the head coach. So, you know, they'll, they'll be in good hands with uh, Whittemore. And, and to be able to keep Bell on staff is, is a big thing, too, because I know the coaches, uh, the players, they love Coach Bell. Uh, so, you know, yeah, that's, that was obviously big news on Tuesday. Yeah, Mark's uh... – 
he's been coaching, ha- helping um, Ron Brooks with baseball. So he's, with the baseball, he's a busy yeah. man. Busy, <laughs> busy is, man. Yeah. Uh, Andy's yeah, he Facebook said he's live. Recharged the ba- he said he's recharged the batteries, though. He, he's married two kids off, two boys off. Yeah. And he's yeah. now in a position where he can kind of help the program a little bit. Yeah, he's only got one one kid still living at home. And I think Andrew's going to be a rising ninth grader, maybe. Um, I think so, he throws, yeah. He, he throws it pretty good, by the way. Um, oh, okay. Andy's question on Facebook Live, before we get you out of here, Mike, says, Mike, seeing that mm-hmm. Quezzy Green and Manatee will play at Buholtz next football season, are there any other games being scheduled among former Gator players who are now coaching in the Gainesville area? You know, I haven't seen uh, all of the schedules. I know that, you know, with us having to wait so long with the new classifications, um, I don't know that all of them are out yet. Uh, I did notice that Manatee game on the schedule. You know, Doc Pollard, who was the Gainesville head coach, um, also a Santa Fe head coach, he's on that staff. So that's another Gator uh, on that Manatee staff. Um, but we see it all the time. You know, uh, Cornelius Ingram has scheduled games against uh, guys that he was teammates with at, at the University of Florida. So I will continue seeing those types of matchups because we get them pretty regularly. And that's kind of a unique opportunity here in the Gainesville area. Yeah. Mike, good stuff as always. Let everybody know how they can read the Main Street Daily News and check out everything on the prepzone.com. All right. Thank you, Shane. I also have a, a free newsletter that's emailed to your inbox every Monday and Friday. All you have to do is go to MainStreetDailyNews.com and, and sign up for it. But as I mentioned, we are broadcasting state semifinal basketball on Friday, live audio coverage, free audio for Hawthorne Wildwood Girls, 3 o'clock Friday afternoon. But first, we'll start out at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning with Wilson and Chipley. And you can uh, find a lot of good stuff online, a lot of articles at MainStreetDailyNews.com. But that's also the website where you would go to listen to those broadcasts. Good stuff, my man. Appreciate your time, Mike. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, Shane. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Mike right out. Does a tremendous job covering these high school kids. Take a quick time out. Come back and get to some of these texts. You're watching and listening to Pot Out Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Meldon Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Dave and Buster's, eat, drink, play, watch. Duffield Home Improvements for your window, siding, and roofing needs. Radware, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing, Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker's Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Hi there, this is Coach Steve Spurrier, and I want to let you know that by popular demand, Spurrier's Gridiron Grill's delicious brunch is now served in a premium buffet. You have spoken, we have listened, and we're now serving Gainesville's only elevated buffet complete with an omelet station, ginger sage chicken sausage, shredded short rib, and of course, our chicken and waffles. Plus, you can enjoy bottomless mimosas and Bloody Marys. So join us every Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 3 for the best brunch in town. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Silverback Concrete is a family-led team of heavy concrete specialists that build commercial structures with unrivaled quality. Silverback Concrete, you stand on it. We stand by it. Text on the Titan Mark text line. From Willie, he says, these Gator fans are nuts. They are never satisfied or happy with anything that Billy Napier does. Um, 
That's true. I mean, I think people just need to either get on board and support or just keep your mouth shut and see what happens or support another team. I mean, look, it's out of your control, like I tell everybody. Let's see if we can go win some games. Difficult schedule, embrace it, go play football, go compete, and let's see if we can win some games. So um, that's how I feel about it. People can be negative or whatever. I mean, here, here's my question. Let's just say, for example, they announced today, Steve Spurrier has been hired by Billy Napier as an offensive analyst. People will probably like that because they know who Coach Spurrier is. But, again, it's an analyst, people. I don't know why people get so pissed off or excited about analysts off the field hires. Uh, anyway, this day in sports brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Puts a start power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. In 1972, future Baseball Hall of Famer Hank Aaron becomes the first player to earn $200,000 Average annual salary, signs a three-year deal with the Braves after one of his best seasons, hitting 327 with 47 dingers and 118 RBIs. That's this day in sports brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Uh, Andy asks on Facebook Live, which QB do you think is going to have the best NFL career? Caleb Williams, Drake May, or Jaden Daniels? Whew. I think a lot of it depends on where they go, what kind of surrounding cast they have. You know, I still think Bryce Young's a very good player, but he had nothing in Carolina, nothing. Um, they weren't good at all on either side of the ball. I think Drake May is your prototypical old-school type quarterback. However, he can move around. He can run a little bit. I think Caleb Williams has a lot of the traits that Pat Mahomes has, off-platform throws. Um, and then Jaden Daniels, to me, is a – uh, as good a runner as Lamar Jackson, but a much, much better thrower. So it's hard to answer. Uh, I like all three of those. I think a lot of it has to do where they go and what type of team they're, you know, that, that is surrounding them. But uh, we'll see. Draft, uh, I guess the combine's going on right now. I thought I saw that. I don't follow any of that stuff. Probably should, but I don't. Uh, again, a tremendous win last night for the Gators when their 20th game of the year. Um, boy, they, they're good. That's a good basketball team, people. I think they're going to go deep. Alabama is down at half and just blast Ole Miss in the second half. Auburn loses at Tennessee, as I thought they would. Um, so the Gators right now have an opportunity to be one of the uh top four seeds in the tournament if they continue winning and get that get the double bye. So that that would be helpful, but um, I think they're going to end up being a six six or a five seed when it's all said and done, possibly. Uh, I, I think they can go sweet 16. I think this team is good enough to be a final four team. So I hope you enjoyed today's program. We want to thank Brent Beer once again for joining us and Mike Rideout, who does a great job covering high school sports. JC and I will be here tomorrow. We'll also have in the second portion of the program, a little surprise for y'all, uh, some stuff that went on Monday night at Coach Spurrier's uh, award banquet that I think you'll enjoy. So have a great day, folks, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.